Hello everyone, this is Ryan. This is a brand new video. This will be probably my last video of the year. Now with that being said, yes, I have been getting more current and more, how should I say, better at posting more videos. I decided to make this video to kind of cap off the year and to also just say happy holidays to everybody who does watch my videos and take a minute to really say thank you and how much I appreciate you guys taking even a little chunk of time to watch some of my video or all of my videos or just whatever you do when you watch my videos. I do really appreciate you taking some time to watch. I'm just extremely grateful for the people who do watch and the people that do support and think that what I am doing is worth their time to take some time to watch one of these videos. I do really appreciate it. I'm deciding to bring you guys a, a little different kind of video. I'm actually going to display the games that I have played and beaten this year and then just touch up on them a little bit to let you know how I felt playing these and my experience with them and just how good or how bad I thought they were. To give you a few ground rules with this video, even though, like I said, there's not very many people I feel are going to watch this, uh, but a few things. These games are all games that I have never, ever beaten. And I mean from back when I was a kid till now. I may have played them when I was a kid, but I never beat them. These are all games that I have beaten from beginning to end, not completionists by any means, but I've beaten them from beginning to end, and I've never done it before. And that's pretty much it. So, let's get to this list. And as I pick up this first game, I also want to give you guys a little bit of a spoiler. All of these games are Nintendo games. I do really love my Nintendo stuff. I haven't really taken the time to play very many other platforms. I default in playing Nintendo products. You can call me a fanboy all you want because you'd be right. But at the same time, I do recognize that other platforms have really good games out there and games that I want to play and beat for myself. I just find myself gravitating towards Nintendo products easier and and I find all of their products to be satisfying whether I can beat the games or not. First we have Yo Yoshi's Woolly World. Wow, I can't get that Claire to look any better. That's, that's not bad though now. So Yoshi's Woolly World. This is a very, very fun, imaginative, and very beautiful piece of art. This, these games, they're more like art than anything else, and by they I mean the Nintendo games. This game in particular is actually a game that you'd think would be really easy, but in fact, once you get further into the game, it gets rather difficult. The gameplay in this game is rather easy to pick up and learn. I just found myself getting lost in this game at hour, for hours at a time. It plays a lot like a Yoshi's Island kind of deal, and just, I mean, you can't, I can't go without mentioning these graphics. I mean, just, and it look, they look so adorable, those yarn Yoshis. Look at those. There's so many of them to collect, there was no way that I was going to go completionist with this game, but this is just, this was absolutely beautiful, it was truly a work of art and when I hear the story of how they came up with doing everything in yarn how there was a Nintendo employee who made little Yoshis out of yarn and gave them to fellow employees and how that that's how they decided on making the premise of this game as opposed to just going like you know the normal Mario route like maybe new Mario U or something like that this this gave it a little bit of a different push, and uh, like I said, the gameplay really it shines. I really do enjoy this game and recommend it for anyone who is, of course, a Mario fan, and more importantly, a Yoshi fan. This game is just too adorable. I can't sing its praises, praises enough, 
it, is, it does get rather difficult down the way, so do not think that this game's a pushover. Especially because this game actually does not have any real, uh, how should I say, consequences. Like, when you die, you get pushed back to like the last checkpoint, and that's pretty much it. You don't have like an amount of lives like you do in games like Mario 64, or Mario U for that matter. It's very, very small consequences. This was clearly a game that had kids in mind when they made it, obviously. A lot of Mario games and a lot of Nintendo games have kids in mind. I would definitely look into getting this game if you have never played it, or if you've never seen it, or if you've never thought about it. I don't know why you haven't, but definitely give this one this a shot. This next one, I have no idea how you haven't heard of it. It's Mario Kart 8. Ooh, that glare. And when I say that I've beaten this game, I mean I've beaten 50, 100, 150, mirror mode, and 200 cc. <sighs> wow. Once you get to 200, C 200 cc, this is the moment where rage quitting would come into effect, but with something like the gamepad, you're... you might want to cool it a little bit. This is definitely probably the most refreshed I have felt with a Mario Kart game. I really enjoyed Mario Kart 7 for the 3DS. I actually had beaten that last year, so that actually would have made this list too had I beaten it this year. But, I beaten that one last year, and then I got this one last Christmas, and it took me a good long time. It I actually just beat this last month, I think, something like that. I'm not even 100% sure on that, but this was definitely one of the best Mario Kart games to come out of the entire series. I know a lot of people have super nostalgia goggles on for the 64, and even Double Dash on the GameCube, which both of them are really good. The 64 for me feels a little dated. I would actually rather go back and play Super Mario Kart, the first one for the Super Nintendo, then 64, that's just a preference. I'm sorry, all you people hating, hate down below if you'd like. But this is easily within the top three of my favorite Mario Kart games. Not to mention just racing games in general. This, it did a lot of new with quite a bit of old. And the DLC in it is absolutely great. Which brings up a good point. With the whole beating the game... I actually did not beat the DLC portions. I did not count that because it was not day one released. You could say that was another rule to this video. I didn't really even think of that till just now. But um, the games that, as they were released day one, all the content that was released with them, I've beaten all of that. So the DLC content does not count with this one for me. I do plan on going back and beating all the DLC content. I just honestly have not bought it yet. And it would be nice to try Link out to see how he, how he go-karts with the Mario characters. But it's not something that I really rushed into. And they're still selling them together as a package for cheaper than just buying them each individually. So probably probably this before this year's up, I'll probably end up buying it. I just have been lazy about it, I guess. So, However, all the tracks in here, all the, all the look-backs to all the other tracks, and they were H deified is how I'll put it. Absolutely phenomenal. It just another work of art in the way that they make these games better and better every year. And just all the different stuff that they do with it. It's just it's absolutely great. Not to mention all the new power-ups and uh, items that you can get. Just absolutely great. If you don't know what Mario Kart is, get out from under the rock. And definitely give this one a try. Now, like I've mentioned, there have been a lot of Wii U games that I've beaten over this past year. But I did take some time, and I played some other titles. I even got to a different Mario title. There's a lot of Mario games in this pile, I believe. But this is another really great game. And I'm counting it because... You know what? I'm just I'm going to show it right away. What I'm talking about is Super Mario 64 for the DS, the DS version of Super Mario 64. I have beaten 
Mario 64 for the Nintendo 64, and I've gotten Yoshi at the end, and that was probably one of my greatest accomplishments in gaming when I was a kid, was to actually get all 120 stars. Not a completionist again by any means, and with this one, I haven't even really gotten every single star there is in this, and not to say that I can't get 120, I actually got, I believe I got up to 140, but then I beat Bowser, and that really was the end of the game, technically. I haven't beaten, beaten every single star, but I wanted to throw this one on the list, and the reason why is because this game actually is quite a bit different considering the fact that it is a remake of the old one. My gripe with this game has to be the controls. This game is it's different for quite a few reasons. One of the big reasons is because you don't even start as Mario in the game. You actually have to unlock him later and then you get to play as him. You also get to play as Luigi. You also get to play as Wario as well. And they all have different techniques and different s stats, I guess. And they make the gameplay different, more rich, but at the same time, the controls playing this... I played this in the 3DS, though. I didn't even use the normal DS. I used the 3DS to play this. I do not recommend you play it on the 3DS with the, your little joystick there. This game just, it's its very floaty, especially if you're playing someone like Yoshi. The controls, they can be kind of taxing. I pretty much, I think, played this an hour at a time when I did play it, or 20 minutes or so. I never really sunk in hours and hours into it in one sitting, and I couldn't. Part of it was because of the controls. There were some levels that it was easier to get through them. Maybe it was because I had played it before, but mostly in playing this game, I, especially towards the end, I had a difficult time getting through. All the Bowser battles felt pretty much the same to me. This really wasn't that bad considering what they were trying to do with it. I don't even know how many extra stars they had in here. Oh, 150, I think. Well, actually, I was close. I didn't get all of them, but I was close. That makes me feel a little better. I was sitting here thinking, I'm like, you know what? I didn't really get all the stars, so I felt bad putting it on this list. But at the same time, I also was trying, I was also feeling a little bit bad because I did beat this game, the 64 version, but the DS version does have a lot more to offer. It kind of feels like its own game. And as far as Mario 64 on the go, I do recommend you give it a shot. I do not know if it's for everybody, especially with the controls, the way they felt, just not quite it. Graphics though, they're up to par. I thought they looked really good for the DS, and I would recommend you play this game if you want to go back and play a different version of Super Mario 64. Now this is one I'm super happy to throw on this list and to say that I've beaten, and that is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. This game is beautiful. Just this game came out before uh, Yoshi's Woolly World did, and looking at this game, I thought it was absolutely beautiful how everything was made of like a Play-Doh slash clay, and it just, again, Nintendo, when it comes to creativity and their graphics, they knock it out of the park every single time. These these graphics in here, do just, they're so imaginative and they're so beautiful and vibrant. It looks absolutely great on the Wii U, of course, because that's the only system it's on. Um, the gameplay is very fun, very different. It, this is one of the games that utilizes the Wii U gamepad really well. I know a lot of people gripe about how the gamepad, not only is it a gimmick, but it's kind of annoying because... The Wii U has a ton of games that don't utilize the gamepad very well. Well, if you're one of those people who want to be able to utilize your gamepad, this is the game you want to pick up. Not only is it just beautiful and it utilizes the gamepad in a great way, this is just a fun story and a great game. Controls are well, work well, and I just, I can't sing its praises enough. I feel like Kirby is one of those very underrated Nintendo mascots. 
everyone talks about their Marios and their Zeldas, and a lot of people have been hopping on the Metroid uh, fan wagon, I guess. I can't even say fan wagon, or bandwagon for that matter. But Kirby is one that I think gets overlooked a little too often, and this game is just absolutely great. This game actually, I've seen the prices are going down on it, so you're not going to be paying the full $60. I actually didn't even pay the full $60 on this. The price is going down, but it's honestly worth a $50 to $60 price tag, and you can get it for less now, so I would definitely recommend that you check this one out. And keeping on that Wii U wagon here, we have Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. Now this game, everyone thought this game was not going to be good because it was simply a spin-off game of a mini game that was in Mario 3D World. Now it's surprising because Mario 3D World is really fun and really great. I haven't even beaten that yet. I had finally gotten a copy of it this year when the Nintendo Selects version of the game came out. I didn't really feel like paying $60. I am poor, as I have mentioned many, many times. So I finally got a Nintendo Selects version. I haven't popped it in since I've gotten it. I haven't had the, the drive to start a brand new Mario game. But this game, I believe I beat it shortly after getting it. I spent a lot of time with this game because this game certainly did look great. I thought it was pretty cool, and even for just a spin-off of a mini-game, essentially, this really uh, was a great puzzler. I do really like puzzle games, and this was definitely one of my favorites on the system, and definitely one of my favorites to come out in the past couple of years. Um, it did have some... some not... Not super difficult, but definitely a little bit frustrating kind of puzzles. I did try to complete this as best as possible. I have not done it, but I've come close. I did obviously beat it though, and it plays really well. It uses the gamepad well as, as well, so this would be another recommended game for those gamepad wanna use the gamepad for a good purpose uh, players. That was a really long title. As far as the controls themselves, they're not bad. I mean, there's there's nothing super special about them. They're rather easy to pick up, which is good. And again, this is just a fun puzzle game for kids and adults, really. Definitely check this one out, guys. Okay, let's step back out of the Wii U formatted game that I've beaten, and let's go to an oldie, but a goodie. At least I think it was pretty good. And that is... Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie for the Super Nintendo. This game is one that I rented a minimum of four times from Blockbuster to play and to try and beat this game. As a kid, I've gotten Ivan Ooze and I did not beat him. Very unfortunate, I was very upset. He is a bastard in this game. I did not like him at all. But when I finally picked this game up, like, two years ago I knew I'd have to take some time to beat this and yes it took all that time to finally sit down and just hammer through it but I did finally hammer through it for those of you who don't know this is a beat-em-up this is the second of the Power Rangers beat-em-ups on this system and this is definitely the better of the two in my opinion I did enjoy this game a lot growing up so when I was able to finally pick this up I was super happy this was Definitely one of those games I definitely had to throw in my collection as soon as possible. Unfortunately, it took me a couple years to finally actually conquer this game. Like I said, Ivan Ooze is a bastard in this game. But I did finally beat him, and I, it's just a sense of accomplishment to put something in my rearview mirror as far as my back catalog of games that I need to beat, especially since this has really been in my back catalog since I played it when I was a kid. So, definitely really fun. If you're a beat-em-up fan, great, great 32-bit graphics, obviously. 32, uh, 32 or 16, I, I can't remember. It's really late at night that I'm filming this. But, 
Definitely a great game. Definitely a great beat em up. I would definitely check this one out. Okay, I, I really don't have many more games to talk about. I have not played 20, 30, 40 games and beaten them. I've definitely played 20 or 30 games, but I haven't beaten them all. These are all just the ones I've beaten. This one does not have a physical release. This is actually just a digital that I downloaded on the Wii U. And I might put a little picture over this video just before I finish talking about it. But the game I am talking about is called Typo Man. Now this game is very interesting. I was first introduced to this at one of the Nintendo press events. I, it was either just after EVO of last year or it was on EVO of last year. I'm not 100% sure. This may have been in one of the directs. I Don't quote me. My guess is it is from one of the directs, but like I said, I'm not 100%. But to get into actually what this game is about, you are a person, a hero character, who is made up of the word hero. Literally, your character's body makes the word hero. Now you're kind of getting the, the message of the name Typo Man. But basically you are dropped into a world and you really don't know why you're there or what's going on. It, The one flaw I do see with this game, as far as its story goes, it's very vague and very broad. The one thing you do know is that it is still rather a simple plot. You are a hero, made up of the word hero, and you are defeating evil, pretty much, as you progress through the game. It is a puzzling platformer game. It can only be bought on the Wii U Virtual Console. As far as its graphic style, it is very dark. This game often reminds me of like Twilight Princess and Majora's Mask, the Legend of Zelda titles for you guys who don't know. They often remind me of that because they are very dark toned and they're, they're graphically beautiful though. They, they give the darkness a certain vibrant look in this game just again just a beautiful work of art. I think they did really well with this. It's, it can be detailed and it can also be not so detailed every now and again. The controls are very simple. You control the hero of the game, and you go around and you start solving puzzles. They're like word puzzles almost, too. There's often places in the game where there's like a word bank, and when you go under the word bank, you can release letters and use the letters to make words, and then the words manipulate the world around you, which I thought was a fascinating and cool, different kind of puzzle game. It's a word puzzle game. This game is definitely one of the best Wii U Virtual Console games, specifically for just the Virtual Console. It's very fun. It's very beautiful. Once again, th those graphics, though. Very good, very beautiful. It's a very short game, unfortunately. So, really for me, the price tag, I believe, is like $15, and for such a short game, it's not going to be worth it to most. I personally waited till it went on sale because, again, I'm cheap. But this game's very fun. It's It makes you think a bit, but it's not super difficult, and it's definitely a game I would recommend you check out. I don't know if it goes on sale often or not, but when it does, it's totally worth it. Definitely give that one a try if you have a little extra money in the bank and you want a really great game for the Wii U. Once again, sticking to the Wii U, this is definitely one of my favorite games on the system. That would be Splatoon. And this game I have gotten hundreds of hours of play into within the past couple of years. This is definitely one of my favorite newest IPs and definitely one of my favorite Wii U games from... Nintendo. The four, the four versus four online uh, multiplayer is great. I feel like Nintendo did it right as far as online play with this. It does have its points where you drop out of games. It, 
it, it can bother you from time to time, but I've, it's never bothered me enough to where I could just shut the game off and say, fuck it, I'm not going to continue playing it. Controls are a little, a little different. I've gotten used to them so well, though, that they don't bother me anymore. And for those of you curious who are big Splatoon fans, I am a big fan of playing the roller, and I have been very, very good at it. It's something... When I play characters in games like this, or um, like your dungeon crawlers like Gauntlet Legends, or games like Diablo 3, your MMORPGs kind of deal, I really like being that in-your-face character. I love the satisfaction of taking the roller, in this game specifically, and just bashing it over your head, just taking you right out. I get a sense of satisfaction in playing characters like that. And with this game, no no difference there with being the roller. I just I absolutely love it. Again, the graphics, they pop out at you. This game is so beautiful. I can't I feel like every single game I talk about on this list, I I say the word the or the words, the graphics are so beautiful. I can't help it. Nintendo does really good with their art styles and all their IPs. This game is definitely no exception. This game is super vibrant, super great. The one player campaign for this, it took me a while to really get into it. I did thoroughly enjoy it and I did spend hours and hours on it. However, it was different. I I guess I played a lot of the multiplayer. I was really looking for that online multiplayer experience with this one and I got really excited to play it. But the first player campaign was definitely interesting and different. It has its own little hub worlds and you go in to different worlds and you create and you um you beat these certain levels and the whole time like with me like I said before I was big into the roller guy in this, especially online, and you can't be the roller when you do the online. You have you have a gun, like like your Call of Duties and everything. I didn't really have a problem playing with the gun, I just had a lot more fun playing the roller. That's just personally, this game is just, it's so good. First player, I do recommend, it was a lot of fun, it just wasn't my thing at all times. There were times where I felt like it dragged a little bit, but in the moments where it was fun and interesting and it really made you work to beat it, it was great. It was a great experience and the multiplayer for this is top-notch. If you can get through those couple of moments where you might end up getting dropped out or if the internet cuts, this is definitely worth it. This is probably one of the best multiplayer experiences I've ever had in my entire life and you should check it out. I've only got two more. I'm going to try to talk about them quickly. It's going to be a little hard because one of them happens to be Star Fox Zero for the Wii U. I know what everyone is saying. That game is awful. Why did you beat it? Why even bother? I love Star Fox. I wanted to see this game through. Yes, this game is mostly just another Mario... or Mario. This is like another Star Fox 64 HD remake, essentially, but fuck, it is beautiful. It is so gorgeous, and the people who don't think it is, you're wrong. I'm sorry. And I have to say that with a smile, because I don't like being a dick, but you're wrong about this. This game looks so good. The Wii U knocks this one well out of the park, graphic-wise. As far as the controls, yes, they're not the greatest. They take a lot of time to get used to. But you know what? I'm a patient man, and I'm willing to learn controls, and I'm willing to take the time. Every single time that I pop this in, and I haven't played it in a month or two, it does take a minute to get back into the swing of them. But why is that an issue? I personally did not see an issue with that. Yes, it even gets a little frustrating from time to time, and some people want to just be able to pick it up and play and everything, but I enjoy the challenge as well. So I saw zero problems with this. Again, this game's absolutely beautiful. It does add a little more than what the original Star Fox 64 has to offer, and obviously a lot more than what the Star Fox on the Super Nintendo offers. 
This game, I think, is definitely worth it. This game will probably plummet in price if it hasn't already. I still think it might be $50, and a lot of it probably has to do with the fact that it has Star Fox Guard packed in with it, which I did play a little bit of that. I didn't beat that by any means. I got through maybe like six or seven stages, and I needed a break from it. It is quite difficult, and with the controls, this game can be difficult at times. The new vehicles in it are a little funky, obviously with the controls, and most of you probably already know that because you played the new vehicles and you went, fuck this, and threw your gamepad across the room and said, screw Star Fox. I didn't. I took the time and I tried my best to beat this game, and I did beat it. Andros was an absolute whore in this game. <laughs> I don't know why I called him a whore. This game is great, and as far as the controls go, if you don't like the motion controls, you do have the option to turn them off. I don't see why it's that big a deal. Graphics, phenomenal. Gameplay, great. Controls, could be better, could be worse. It depends on how you feel about motion controls. Platinum and Nintendo working together on this, they did a really awesome job. It was definitely a good in my book. And I definitely say, give it another shot if you're one of the naysayers. Because you really don't know what you're missing. This is the last game I have to show you guys. Thank God, probably for most of you, this video is going to run a little long. But, this is the last video of the year, I'm kind of making it count. The last game that I have to show you that I beat was for Nintendo 64. That is Banjo-Kazooie. This game, I never beat growing up, and honestly... I think I only got through like the first three levels. They're a lot of fucking fun to play. All the levels in this are a lot of fun to play. Great rare game, great game period. And there's a, this is a collectathon type game. It was definitely taxing to try and get everything. And I learned very early on that getting the musical notes is a big deal because you need them to open up the, the next worlds and everything. Obviously great controls. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of the 64 controller. I really am. I thought it was really nice and I don't mind pretty much anything about it other than the fact that it's a pretty lunky controller. But so was that original Xbox controller. Great 64-bit graphics. Just absolutely beautiful. This great 3D world. Banjo-Kazooie and the humor in it, absolutely great. I love when they add humor even to games that are supposed to be kind of serious. I don't know. It definitely had like a serious plot line. I mean, Banjo's sister gets abducted, so you have to gather all this stuff to try and beat Gruntilda and get her back. This game had a lot of levels that were big and vibrant and beautiful, but then they also had some of the dark moments and stuff like the swamp level. Um, even the, uh, the one with the pirate ship, I can't remember what it is. Leave that down below, I forgot the name of it. But, graphically beautiful, controls really well. I really enjoyed the, the controls for this game. Very easy to pick up and play, really. If you are a person who likes to complete games more than just beat them, and even if you're beating this game, this one will take you some time, because you need those, you need the musical notes, and you need all the puzzle pieces, obviously. Definitely a collectathon game. It's going to take you time. So if you have the time, this is a definite recommend for the system. And I'm pretty sure you might even be able to get this on the Wii U console. Give it a shot on there as well. Definitely worth your time. I am winded, but that is the end of this video. These are the games that I've completed in 2016. It doesn't look like a lot, but I definitely put a lot of hours into them. I took my time. I appreciate exactly what each of them had to offer. And absolutely beautiful. I really wish there was a physical copy of Typo Man. I keep looking back at that and I'm like, where's Typo Man? No, oh, it's not up there. But anyway, thank you guys so much for sticking around for this video. 20 plus minutes. I am so sorry to keep you around that long. I've been trying to condense my videos so you guys can get as much viewing as you can without having to sit at the computer for a half hour. Which you're probably, it's probably a half hour at this point. I'm sitting here spitballing 20 minutes. Now it's probably like 30 and I apologize. But thank you so much for sticking around if you made it this far. Hit that like button if you like this video, obviously. Comment down below. Tell me some of the games that you finished 
or even completed this year. I would love to have conversations with you about it. And of course, if this is your first video, please hit that subscribe button. I love talking to everyone here out in the YouTube world. Positive, negative comments down below. I already mentioned that. I'm going to get out of here. Everybody, have a great holiday season, and I will see you in 2017. Take care.